all right guys today is june 6 and it's time to do the next update this is episode number six of my 2018 grow series so we're going to start with a very special pepper plant that i have this season and this is the only franken pepper tree that uh, that is still remain and the reason i call it the franken pepper tree is because i grafted it so uh, let me show you something really cool so as you can see this here is one of my uh, crosses and this here is a super pekin is another crosses of my own and um, i did the grafting indoor and i have a video on that so i will link you so you can see how it was done so i took the top piece of the super pekin and i grafted onto the staracha plant here and as you can see right here that's where the union is and it all healed up the bottom is the staracha and the top is the super pekin and look at this see that fruit there the staracha right there and then on top you have super pekin and see here these are pekin fruits um, they're starting to come out much more so um, it's a very beautiful plant and it produced a ton of these little cool looking pots here they're, they're somewhat small they're larger than the usual Pekin because this is a cross and they also taste much better the original Pekin um, doesn't have much of a taste and it's a lot of seed so sometimes it gets a little bitter unless you dry it up as powder then it would taste really good or make hot sauce with it but this variety here is it tastes really good right off of the tree so it tastes almost like a super hot with uh, the Pekin size okay so that's that's the plant that everyone has been asking and uh, my Franken pepper tree super Pekin on top staracha at the bottom so let me show you the fruit one more time. I only have one because the bottom has been struggling with mites. As you can see, the leaves are damaged. But then the Pekin, pretty pest resistance, I guess. And it does just fine. Okay, so that's our first plant. And here is my lemon starburst propagated branch looking great. I have some ground cherries. Man, the, the birds have been messing with my ground cherries and my tomatoes, so it, it keep pecking at it and all of these young fruits keep falling off. So all of my tomatoes have been eaten by the birds. Uh, you know, anytime it gets to a, um, a color that I was going to pick, like a, a little red, the birds get before I do. So <laughs> I haven't gotten any tomato. Uh, in a past two weeks because they they just keep eating them all so uh, so th those are what's remain of it okay next is a very special plant again this is the super Pekin and I have some fruits that are ready see that those little tiny fruit there they're, they're pretty small uh, I have a few larger ones so these are almost ready it's it's orange right now and uh, it will eventually turn completely red but I have them all over the place see there's some right here and then some over there so I will be doing a what's the pepper video very soon on these guys so some of them are larger uh, I prefer the, the little larger like those right there and you see those are the tags and I've been crossing them with something else because those are gonna be for experimenting purposes this year but look how beautiful this plant is in a very small bucket I think this is a two gallons but look at how big the plant is and it has a ton of fruits so every tip here you see those buds and then those buds will form into fruit and I have a bunch of fruits already see fruits there they're all over the place it's kind of hard to see because they, they're blending in with the with the leaves but I, I have a good amount of them in there here is one of my scotch bonnet the chocolate scotch bonnet cross I think yep and here's another chocolate scotch bonnet cross that I just transplanted I have two these came from indoor um, 
<laughs> that one's kind of falling over. I just transplanted it today. That one's doing okay. And here's my stargazer. These plant here, guys, if you go and grow in the stargazer, they grow humongous. So this is a stargazer that I'm actually doing something special to it. So it's not actually just regular stargazer. It's a, it's an updated version. So <laughs> we'll see how that looks. And this is the uh, Scotch Brain that I topped. So uh, it's covering nicely, looking great. Those are all of the branches that I propagated from uh, cutting down that tree there. So I, ha I have a video on that. So I will link you guys. Uh, the smaller Super Peking. See, these things grow so unique. I mean, look at this. It doesn't matter what size pot it is. They just grow so nice. See this? The bigger the pot, the larger it will get. So if you put them in a smaller pot, it still will do just fine. And it looks beautiful. Great looking pepper. And these guys can live through anything. I mean, I left these guys out here, I think since February when it was really, really cold and they didn't care. Okay, that's my uh, special bonsai attempt. It was doing great, but now it's starting to grow like crazy. So there's pods right there, you see? This is the black boot. Pods here, and pod here. So it's putting out more pods. And this is the plant that I chopped down. It's recovering nicely. I have some little, those are nagas for the contest. Uh, man, I've been neglecting those. I, I need to take care of those so I can have some kind of uh, a way to enter the contest. And that's my fish pepper that I started later. And this is the ahi cher pita. I got it from Peter. Peter, that those are the seeds from you. Thank you so much. And here I have um, propagated branches for my lemon starburst. And this is the special lemon starburst here for the 2018. And let's let me show you some fruits. Look at that. You see, that is the pheno that I want. See how beautiful that is? It looks like a spindle top needle. Has a pointer at the bottom, like a cool looking stinger. Very beautiful. And there's a few more in here. See this? Look at that crazy stinger. That is the shape that I always go after and seeds are gonna be safe from those right there there's more in here somewhere so they're, they're started they're starting it's a great looking plant it struggled a little bit in the beginning okay so now it's looking really really nice okay next is the Staracha hornet that I transplanted from uh, the arrow garden uh, the last video I topped this guy and now it's making his way back looking beautiful That is the Reaper and This one here is the Crimson Star and it has a Ton of flowers, but the flowers are kind of dropping this look at all this So um, I need to figure out what's going on so that I can Fix the problem. I think it's it could be too much heat because right now it's like the past few weeks it's in the 98 to 100 and you know it's, it's just too hot so that's why I moved it into this shaded area so uh, and after I moved it in it actually worked a little look at that big old fruit in there nice and bumpy and this guy produced some of the most beautiful fruit that are nice and bumpy and look ridiculous very very hot so there's a ton of flowers. This variety produces a lot if, if you can get it to, uh, to stick. Because right now, my, the, as I mentioned, they, they don't do too well in, in extreme heat. So between 75 to 85, that is their ideal temperature and they would do the best. 
if it gets up to the 90s to 100 they'll start to drop flowers so that's what that's what I noticed from the last year and this year okay and then the other super Pekin that I have this is a five gallon bucket Pekin super Pekin so I'm have I have these guys grown everywhere because I love them they're the they, they, they're easy to maintain they grow beautifully and they produce a ton of fruits and that tastes pretty good too so um, I'm gonna send a few to some people this year so they can try it and then I will be saving a lot of seeds um, maybe to give away later because that variety is very very special and if you see those tag there see here I actually crossed these with a lemon starburst <laughs> So we'll see how that goes and as soon as those become red, I'm gonna pick it off and then grow it inside Okay, next we're gonna go into the yard here and give you some update of the plants in the raised bed Look at that. That is the ground cherry that I have inside my lemon lemon tree box and Beautiful plant here. Look at this a ton of little actually a pretty good sized ground cherry and these seeds originally came from Antonio Antonio if you're watching the video buddy all of these seeds were from you and I gave a ton of these to people as well so whoever grown the ground cherry for me uh, make sure to thank Antonio and I have been picking some of the fruits off of my other plant actually not picking but you wait until they fall off like this and then you pick it and then put it away on, on the counter in your house uh, for like a week or more until it becomes nice and golden that's when it tastes the best don't eat it when it's this green guys these things are toxic when they're green or possibly I'm not sure but a lot of the ground cherries are toxic when they're green so don't eat the green fruits just wait until they fall off to the ground pick it and then put it away on your counter until it turns gold and then you can eat it if you eat it and it tastes bad just toss it out if it's sweet then it's good okay and then here is my lemon starburst raised bed look at this a, a, a month ago these things were about that size so that guy is is, uh, is lagging behind because it was struggling and uh, I had lettuce sitting over here it covered the plant and so this is what happened when the plant don't get any sun so uh, the rest of them were the same uh, age and look at that but it wasn't being covered so this the lettuce was covering this so that's why it's growing so slow and it, it would not recover to be this size here unless you dig it out and move it somewhere else because right now it's gonna have to compete for all the nutrients with the larger plant and it would not be able to compete so the best thing to do is uh, dig it up and put it somewhere else where it, it doesn't have any competition. Okay, so and then in here I had those those are the plant that were that were transplanted in the beginning and then the bugs ate it and then it, it came back. <laughs> so it came back slower, but man, these these plants are just amazing. Um, if there's any sign of life and the middle part where the, 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 the growing shoot is still uh, good, it will come back. But if you damage the middle growing shoot, then the, the plant is wasted. So look at this. Beautiful plants. And I actually have fruits already for these guys. So uh, there it is. I'm not sure what the shape will be. Because these are like um, uh, random seeds that I I just pulled out to grow and the plant that you saw earlier I actually selected the, the particular one that I saved to grow so it's, it, I'm gonna be very surprised how these are gonna turn out and it's all gonna it's gonna be very interesting and then here uh, I have some scarlet rose man I, I should not plant them so close together but right now I'm gonna have to do something so they don't cross pollinate so um, I learned a cross-pollinate trick from Peter, Peter Stanley. There it is right there, using paint thinner net, and that that will protect that plant from being cross-pollinated with anything else. That's my hornet. 
and these are shiso man i need to cut these guys out because they're covering a lot of my plants at first i'm using uh, at first i was using them as shade for the plant but now it's just taking over so those have to go so those are all hornets in there And here I have one of the scotch brain that I left untopped. So it has fruits. Look at this. Let me show you. L look at this beautiful fruit. Scotch brain. And down there as well. And these have like some of the most beautiful fruits the, of, of, of all the plants that I've, I've grown. I just love the way they look. The color, the shapes and everything. Okay, so that's my herb bed and the scotch brain is all mixed up in there and this is my white habanero and here is uh, Susan's um, ahi tangerine I just started these guys about a week ago and when I went out of town it sprouted so it became really leggy so I I bury them deeper so we'll see how that one turns out I, I like growing this variety because uh, it's a very very tough variety produce really beautiful fruits that taste real good so uh, if you have not seen uh, or or want to know what they taste like I have a review video so you can check it out I'll link you and here is my misery sweet I had two but only one made it look at the other one this this one here it was eaten by the roly-poly and then that's all that's left of it. So you see the center, uh, the grown shoot, I don't know if it's damaged or not, but it may not ever recover because it's just damaged beyond <laughs> recovery. And then there, that's the scotch brain that we topped. So it, it, it recovered nicely and it is now bigger than the one that we did not top that I tested with which is that one, but that's not fair because that one's competing for um, resources with, with so many things. But this one here is not. That's the one that was not topped and I just picked leaves, I mean leaves, but uh, I just picked off the, the fruits or the buds and see, untopped, it's got brain, same age. This one was actually the best looking one, but somehow it is not doing that as well after the um, the topping experiment so I mean I guess this one here is all on its own inside um, the pot there by itself so that could also factor in some of the advantages but um, I, I do like to top my plants early because it, it helps them grow real short and uh, produce more branches which kind of help them withstand from the wind and stuff like that so this one as well this is the, the one that i topped in the middle see somewhere there and it's nice low and stocky which is great for me because this area gets a lot of wind and sometimes when there's storms it just blows everything over okay and here are some these i think these are stargazers Man, I love this variety, but they're not doing too well. And these are, let's see what these are. These are my torch, the Kangstar torch. And these, these are stargazers. And those are Texas Crimson Bonnet. And these are the Kangstar pumpkin. One of them just died because something ate it. And then that's the scotch brain. And then on this bed here, the, all of these are white ties. So they're looking really, really nice. Gr growing back after my topping experiment. Uh, these white tie here, they grow best in the second year. So I may take one of these guys inside during the winter time and then bring them back out later because I did that two years in a row and the one that was brought in for overwintering grow ridiculous and they they produce also the best okay and then look at this crazy tomato plant that's the sun sugar is out of control i should pull that guy out 
because it's, it's it's probably sucking up all of the uh, nutrients from this bed here we got some herb over there and tomato plant and I found a few tomato hornworms in here so guys this time of the year is when you're gonna get hornworms so if you see like small speckle of black dots on your leaves look around you may find them okay and here is uh, another bed with Kangsta red those are all top and the Kangsta yellow that one's top that one's not that one's not so here's the topped one here and I, I don't think that is oh actually that one is and those are not there and then these are the Linzo the Linzo are producing pods already so I will get to see what they look like very soon right now they're just too small to tell but I'm very excited about those because I really like the way they taste and I had watermelons in here look at this and then I, I had another one but the rabbits chewed it up man they just destroyed all my watermelon I only have one left so I'm very happy still but I, I need to protect that one somehow and then the last bed is just a bunch of uh, tomato ground cherries garlic all kinds of different things my onions are still growing like crazy I, I leave these here because they attract bees the bees love those things so that's why I left them and then here I have some cucumbers that's Susan Ahi Tangerine three of them <laughs> I hope they survive the heat is just so ridiculous right now and then this bed here is just um, a bunch of stuff I have some sweet misery uh, let's see what else misery sweet I think they are in here some of my Thai crosses right here herb some aloe comfrey and this one here I think is a lamb's quarter I, I just found it in the yard and I, and I left I let it grow right there it's, it look it looks pretty cool all right guys that is pretty much all for the update in this video there's not much going on i already showed you guys how to fertilize them i did the topping so at this point you pretty much gonna fertilize every week until they produce a lot more flowers then you do it less frequently because you you don't want to fertilize a, a lot during bloom because then the plants might drop all of their buds so to fertilize, just go back to the last video I did. Uh, I use a fish emulsion, and it's basically two tablespoons per gallon of water, and you just water them in. And uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, there's not much going on in this video because I've done all that already. And right now I'm just watching the plant grow and then checking for bugs and stuff like that. If you come out and see pests, like those hornworms, pick them off and just help the plants uh, not go uh, without water for too long but you also don't want to water too often and that's it just just wait and see the fruits anyway guys um, that this update is very simple just showing you the plants there's not much going on so in the next update we may be picking some fruits thank you for watching please like comment and subscribe